We have a great show for you today. We're answering a lot of your questions, your voicemails, and getting into some debates. Now that our rankings are done, you don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, May 7th, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway with you, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. You know, Andy, you uh, you came in. You, you, you had a you had a you had your pointer finger up like you had a you, you had a point to say, but I'm telling you from my perspective the way you were holding that hand up, yeah, flipping you off. I thought you were flipping the camera off. I, mean, oh. I was like, what is happening? Welcome in YouTube. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, Andy pulling out his no best, uh, no, it's a pointer finger. It was kind of directed at you, like, hey, Jason, it's you and me today, it best sure friends is. day. Mike is sick as a dog, sick or as sick a, as a bear, sick as a bear. Jay Grizz sitting in today. Yeah, so it's you and I, and that's okay. I think that makes for a great show. You and I have also just completed our initial run through of the 2024 stat projections for every single offensive player in the National Football League. Yes, we have. It was a uh, grueling labor of love, and this is only the first go-through. We'll we'll obviously be updating things nonstop when superstars like Jalen Guyton sign right. at certain places. But um, Odell Beckham. Well, I mean, I said superstars. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, but it it took a lot of work, and uh, it's nice to have the first set done. I got away to a cabin and just like hunkered down because I'm very ADHD. Uh, it takes me too long if there's uh, any noise, any Jason movement. Jason and I have different processes for completing our statistical projections. Yes. Very different. Yeah, mine is really good. Slow. Mine is also very slow. Yeah, I, I'm not, I think it is good. I think your process is good. It's just that. Uh, sometimes you end up in this place of desperation because uh, normally I am done before you, and that was not the case this year. You started very early. This was the first. You got year. away to a wilderness. Yeah, our 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 tenth year uh, doing this show. This was the first year I was the first one to finish because of the wilderness. I think the woodland creatures. They helped. They certainly did. Yeah. So you and I, we we went through our first run through. We've been. It's fun when you get done statting out all these players or at least the first, you know, draft of that, which all goes into the ultimate draft kit. That's where all of our rankings come from. All of our projections and everything are in there. It's also what allows your custom scoring formats to, to you know, if, if if you do things where, you know, whether you're six point or four point or you do a uh, extra bonus for tight ends at this, you know, whatever your league is, you can plug in your stats and, and we have this, this statistical backing. Yeah, so you can, yeah, exactly, contort the rankings to your league style. That's part of the UDK's customization. But it's fun when we kind of get done with it and we look. Like, at, for example, my first run through, I have Marvin Harrison Jr., somebody that people are very excited to see where he gets statted. I have him at number nine, and I think you've got him I, I have somewhere him a, around 16. I have him a little bit lower. Um, right now, yeah, I believe he's my wide receiver 17 in half PPR scoring. His upside is through the roof, though. I don't blame anyone taking him as a top 10 wide receiver. Is there a name on your initial rankings at any position that you are embarrassingly high on and would have preferred I didn't bring it up <laughs> so you could adjust it and then come back and tell me the number later? Yeah, so this is the the – this is the weirdest one. It's 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 so 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 silly to say that you're embarrassed to have this guy number one, because he literally might be the best player of all time in the NFL. But I was genuinely, wholeheartedly shocked when I finished my rankings and saw that Patrick Mahomes was my quarterback one in six point scoring formats. Now, obviously, he's been there before, so that's not like an outlandish thing. But you know, he was the quarterback eight last year. The, the system that they've been employing is more dink and dunk, and while I do think he's upgraded his weapons, I was just 
I was surprised to see that's how it, it landed. But, you know, m part of my process is going through the entire T of the teams and seeing <laughs> there's entire a, the tea. entire T of Got the teams. Because, I, I, you know, I, I love a good high T team. And when you looked at Marquise Brown added to this team and you look at Xavier Worthy added to this team and you still have all the other cast of characters, you know, possible suspension notwithstanding for Rushy Rice, it it all compiled up to where I, I think P Patrick Mahomes is going to have a bounce back season statistically. Obviously, he won the Super Bowl, but for fantasy purposes, I'm uh, more in on him, and especially when you combine that with the fact that because he had a down year, he's not going to be like last year. He was in the second round of your draft. Most quarterbacks that you, you would define as a pocket passer require an outlier to high end touchdown season which oftentimes is difficult to throw into your stat projections when you look at averages. So it's rare when a touchdown-dependent type of quarterback ends up that high in the rankings. Mahomes is very much like worthy, much like Rodgers was during his peak, of projecting those kind of years. But I have him at three. My uh, surprise, I have Dak at four in six-point scoring. Ooh which was was different. And then I have Evan Ingram sitting at three at tight end. Yeah, that one. Which, you know, is not part of my brand. No, you're very anti-Ingram, and that is surprising. I've got Evan Ingram at my tight end nine. I think, I, I, I just look at I That's know he That's where a, I normally like to keep him. Yeah, like, you know, a low-end tight end one where, it does, where he doesn't matter. No low-end low tight end one matters. And so he's coming off a season where he almost set the, you know, reception record played a lot of games without Christian Kirk in that underneath area of the field where I think that boosted him up. Obviously, there's a ton of targets vacated here between um, you know the the departures of Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley. So he, he's he's an interesting player to debate. Uh, where is Jaden Daniels on your first run through? When you talk about, let's do the rookies. Sure. sure. Rookie quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels, I was surprised he is just outside my top 12. He's my quarterback 13. Okay, I've when, got him at 14. Yeah, so when you have the ability to rush for, you know, the ability to rush for 850 yards and five-plus rushing touchdowns, that's usually going to be a top-12 quarterback. It's just hard to, you know, we're never going to, you know, Jalen Hurts ran for 15 touchdowns last year. Um, you're never going to project a, a number like that. And so that's why also in the UDK, we've got an upside meter in there so you can see like not just like here's what should happen here's the most likely outcomes but also who's got the chance to just go nuclear who can explode who are you willing to take your shots on and that's out of 10 what's your upside for Jaden Daniels out of 10 uh for Jaden Daniels let me pull I have up. it uh, while you pull it up I have him at eight on the upside which is very high uh I have let me see I have him at eight and a half so you suck no you know, I have the low end of the upside yeah, I'm just saying. You have saying the high end of the I feel like upside. he's got more upside than you do. No, you, you do feel that way. And um, just mathematically. Caleb Williams at 18. So, Caleb Williams uh I still see with very very high upside, but with because of the weapons. Yeah, um, he, he he finds himself in a great situation, has as much talent as anybody that's been coming in. The only obvious difference for fantasy is he's not the you know, 500 plus rushing yard type of guy and because fantasy scoring is stupid and broken for quarterbacks where they score more for running than they do for passing for the exact same amount of yards it's just always unfair you've got that very succinctly prepared it's just do we need to dumb. just a drop i think i want to drop that just uh, <laughs> where he can just explain his it, disdain yeah it's, it's not just, going to change no i know it's not so going to change move on brother i i've moved i i play moved on i Give my analysis moved on, but I still look. Sometimes you need an agent for change, and I will try to speak truth into the darkness. Now, we didn't add testosterone levels to the rankings this year. Right? Upside meters and risk meters, there's no high T, because that would be the Chargers this year, right? But I saw you put Justin Herbert. You had him a little higher oh, than that, maybe, yeah, that maybe was, you thought he was going to be. That was definitely maybe far more surprising than Patrick Mahomes because – Right now, I've got him as a top 12 quarterback, and obviously Her Herbert is um very talented, real-world quarterback, but he's lost 
most of his weapons, and this is a team that's going to run the ball. So, you know, for a pocket guy to really be up there, you've got to have 35 touchdowns. You don't see him throwing 35 touchdowns this year in this system with these weapons. But you have him in your top 12. I do. I have him running the ball quite a bit more. Well, I, I do as well. I, I think what people need to realize is, like, when you have rankings that go top to bottom, like to put Herbert there, that pushes other players out like a Jaden Daniels or a, a Tua or a Jared Goff or or whatever, Stafford. Um, so, you know, they can be misleading at times when you have rankings that go top to bottom because I was talking to you about this this morning, rookie wide receivers, for example. My highest ranked is Harrison at nine. I've got neighbors at 17. And then Roma Dunze is down in the 40s right now. But that doesn't mean that Roma Dunze is not going to be worthy of your roster just because he's outside the top 36. A lot of the times these players, running backs, wide receivers, at the you know when they're rookies, they earn snaps, opportunities. Second half of the year can be a lot stronger than the first half of the year. So there's nuance there. That's what upside factors into. So I just thought we'd walk through a little bit of it. But, yeah, uh, Kyle's pointing out since 2014, 3.7 rookie-wide receivers per season finishes top 36 options. So maybe it's not Odunze. Maybe it's McConkie. I've got maybe McConkie it's Roman in, Wilson. Yeah, I've in got Pittsburgh. McConkie in my top thirty-six right now. So I've, I, I believe I've got three rookies right now in my top thirty-six. All of the player-by-player uh, player statistical projections they launched with the UDK on June first, UltimateDraftKit.com. The best ball rankings normally launch on June first. Best ball rankings are live right now. Yeah, they're I mean, live today. People are playing it now. We've got them now. We need we needed to get them out, so we. We bring it to you, the people. So if you've got the UDK Plus, boom, bam, check your rankings. You've got uh, best ball rankings. That's right. And uh, you can also get in on the Discord channel, the best ball Discord channel, uh, people talking all the time because you're playing, you're drafting right now. And the best ball primer comes out on June 1st as well. All right, quick question of the day, Jason. Oh, boy. This one comes from Marcus. It's Marcus with a K. Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S, Marcus. It's not how we spell it over here. Well, he's from Germany. Oh, bonjour. Thanks for the great work. Do you guys believe in Chargers wide receiver Quentin Johnston? I don't get why so many people seem to quit on him. Seems to put in a ton of work, and a new coaching staff could mean a fresh start. I don't know if the ton of work is correlating to the video circulating right now of him working out with Cardinals rookie phenom Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh man, don't have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Don't don't use that as a video in favor of Quentin Johnston. That you video, watch those two guys go. They're both first round picks, and it's like one of them looks like a sensational super route running gazelle. And by comparison, Harrison maybe, looks much better. Yeah, may, may, maybe it's just by comparison because you're running next to Marvin Harrison Jr. But uh, Quentin Johnston does not quite look as fluid. But let's talk about Quentin Johnston. There's a lot of people that invested in him in Dynasty Leagues. Last year had some, I would say, headline-catching drops. The kind of drops that were played over and over and over again on Twitter uh, where people laughed. Mm -hmm. and uh, Very consequential as well in, very the, in the games that, yeah, yeah. when they happened. I, I went back and I, I watched every target and reception of Quentin Johnston last season. I heard tale of that. It took 11 minutes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a lot, but I don't think that's it is. not a lot. No, that's not a lot. That's the problem. But continue. What did you see on film? So I say that because what the film doesn't show is every play he's not targeted. And there were a lot of those. His targets per route run, 13.7%. That's 39th out of 42 first round rookie wide receivers over the last decade. So didn't get targeted a lot. Low yards per route run. Um, 33 out of 42 in target percentage and had opportunity with Mike Williams going down. But I will say this. I watched every single play that he made on the entire year, every target, every drop, every PI call, several of his drops came on plays where he did draw pass interference penalties. There were three real bad, real bad drops. He did make big plays. He made hands catches across the middle. Um, he made plays down the field. Uh, 
you know, there were back shoulder throws and some rapport he was building with Justin Herbert that I thought were uh, pretty great plays. Um, so I thought it was better than the drops for Vade, like the story of of opportunities. Like when he made, when he got them, there were more plays that he made than I thought he did. But the question isn't going to be like that. Should be the the given to me. Mm-hmm. Your first round wide receiver, you should make some plays. Yeah. So the question should be how many opportunities are you getting to make them? You know, and then could he be the one? Okay. So let me let me ask you this to 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 rewind just like two seconds into what you said. Your first round wide receiver. Let me give you a hypothetical situation. Okay, you are a first round wide receiver. You go to a good quarterback. Yeah. And you are the number two in targets. Like you are set. You're you know Jordan Addison last year is an example of this. Yes, first round is. wide receiver goes to a decent quarterback. He's the clear number two in the offense. But like he's not on the bench. He's on the field. Given just that generic thing, you're not a person. Not Quentin Johnson. Not Jordan Addison. What stat line would you be expecting for a first round wide receiver on the field as the wide receiver two for a good quarterback? Awesome question. Let me come up with an answer for you. Yes, <laughs> I did it. So you're on the field all all season long. Is that all what you're season long? And, Game and one where, to seventeen. Where would you? You play. What number se- would let's you say need? you play seventy five percent of the snaps. And and what number would you need to be to where you said, oh, that's an okay rookie season? Yeah, I would say probably just a. A hair above what JSN did last year, because I don't feel like JSN's rookie season was. was JSN was what, like six six hundred fifty? Yeah, so yards I would say about like seven hundred fifty to eight hundred yards. Yes. I mean, it's a seventeen game season. Yeah, so seven hundred, seven hundred fifty, eight hundred yards, and sixty catches. Okay, or so fifty five to sixty catches. Let me give you a sample of Quentin Johnson. Now, Quentin Johnson got off to a slow start, but also Mike Williams got was off there to a slow finish, <laughs> but. The finish was without Justin Herbert, so that's not fair either. Okay. So you've got a rookie year in yeah. the beginning where it's not really fair. You're you're brand new your first couple games, right? The first couple of games of Justin Jefferson's incredible rookie season, he didn't play. And you had Mike Williams there. The end of the year, no Justin Herbert. However, there was a six-game period where he was the number two. He was Mike Williams was gone and Herbert was there. Six games. And he has a great quarterback. Here would be his... And and for the record, he played seventy four percent of those snaps. So he was on the he was the wide receiver two for this team. Setting up real nice. Uh, here's the total stat line if he played that that okay. stretch for okay. seventeen games. It would have been fifty three receptions uh-huh. for five hundred and four yards and three touchdowns. So that would to be me. An, that's not the end of the it's world. It's not the that's end of the world, the but the world. it is absolutely a dud, which is not it's surprising. Under, Nobody's surprised. Very but underwhelming. I would, but. Going, jumping up to, you know, 67 to 70 receptions, 700, 800 yards, and putting, you know, five or six touchdowns at 6'4", 220, that doesn't seem un- unrealistic with no Mike Williams, no Keenan Allen. Yeah, so um, this is why I've got Lad McConkey as high as I have him. Yeah, you're be- the highest there, right? Yes, not only because I believe in the talent, but... Quentin Johnston has a role to play, and he's still figuring out how to do that well in the NFL. He's you know going into his second year. I'm not betting. Uh, well, I am betting against him, but I'm not like closing <laughs> the door. I don't. I don't think it's a guarantee that he's you know he you, can't you, be better. But you did grab the handle. Oh yeah, I'm like and you're I'm like, closing the door, right, right? But I'm like peeking out first. I'm like, ah, is he gonna make it in? Uh, probably not. I'm ready to shut it. But the thing is, is he was not a target earner. That's the biggest thing. He was on the field for 74% of snaps for that stretch and did not earn enough targets. Like you said, 39th out of 42 first-round draft picks and targets per route run. That is objectively awful. I think that Lad McConkey will be a target earner. He's going to be open in the spot where Herbert is expecting. And so that's why I, I've got Lad McConkey coming in here and being immediately the number one you know, tar- I've I've got Quentin Johnson with about a hundred targets, and I've got Lab McConkey with one hundred twenty-five. It's a good discussion. I haven't closed the door on Quentin Johnston. Um, there were there uh, one thing I didn't get to add from watching every single play. There were a number of plays where he did not achieve separation down the field. Thus, no target Espe- usually, and, and it was mostly intermediate routes. It wasn't over the top down the sideline. Some of the bad drops, he actually had separation on those plays. And then they did involve him, not enough, underneath using the yards after the catch. But in the intermediate routes, not enough separation. 
kind of Kelvin Benjamin esque in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, percentage chance he's their number one fantasy producer at wide receiver. Uh, I, I have it at, like twenty percent. Yeah, exactly. Twenty five percent. He's definitely not the leader for odds okay. on favorite. I don't know if that helped the Deucers Alley over there. I know Papa Josh had some dynasty investment in Quentin Johnston. Have you? Uh, yeah. Do you see what we just said as a pro Quentin Johnson yeah. or a, as an anti Quentin Johnson thing? He's on my team. I'm pro Quentin Johnson. <laughs> so, so, so he didn't hear it bias. at all. Yeah, it's whatever you wanted it to be. Okay, that's okay. fair. Yeah. Um, Quentin Johnson's not going to work. You don't think? No. I, I there's 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 ways that we can paint and narratives we can paint, but it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're probably right. At least the historical situation is not good Dotson like Josh Dotson uh, Laquan Treadwell John Ross Nikhil Harry Jalen Rager those are other rookie first rounders that that are on the field and not earning targets yeah that's the problem is that he had opportunity if you sat behind someone and you got on the field for 20 30 40 50 percent of snaps okay but like yep yeah it's good for them that they weren't the Brock Bowers destination because I think that would have made it easier for me to like the door would be locked. Oh, maybe. right, right, right. All right, let's uh, let's take a quick break and come back with some news. News and notes from around the league. Not surprising to me, but the Steelers did decline the fifth-year option for running back Najee Harris. I gotta be honest, I was a little surprised. Because you thought they liked them more than they liked him more than they should. Yes, it's one hundred percent. It was not my opinion on Najee, and that I think he should have the fifth year option. I'm surprised that the Steelers didn't do it. You Very know, proud of you, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're a well run organization, and I think it does tell you something about Najee that is not a rosy outlook. You know, Najee has not been bad. No. Uh, Najee has not been what they thought he was. Both of those things can be true at the same time. Last year, Jalen Warren was the better running back in basically every metric. He he had a ton of targets. Explosive run rate was 7% higher than Najee Harris. Najee still gets into the end zone. And you and I talked before the show, Pittsburgh's greatest accomplishment in the draft was the offensive line in upgrading what Najee and Jalen Warren will have to work with. Slash Cordero Patterson, thank you, um, Arthur, Arthur Smith. Smith. Yeah, and, and and they got a quarterback upgrade. Say whatever you want about Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, they're not great. Oh, I will. But they're they will threaten the defense more than Kenny Pickett did, and so that should help the the running backs. Honestly, both of these guys, Najee and Jalen Warren, are huge winners after the draft. You know, you want to talk about the sneaky veteran winners. It's not that they just didn't draft a running back. It's that they drafted no running back and totally improved the offensive line. I this will probably be the nicest thing I've ever said, but if you want to get boring and take Najee later because nobody else wants to get boring, it'll probably help your team. Wow, that is without a doubt the nicest thing you've ever said about Najee. You you've been anti Najee as long as I can remember. He was the running back four his rookie year, running back fourteen two years ago, and running back twenty one this last year. I expect And fun fact, nobody has ever won a fantasy championship with him. <laughs> that is actually inaccurate because Najee Harris is a second half of the year champion they definitely won one the first year because that was when mitch trubisky gave him like nine thousand receptions dude the last two years and what last year he was rb8 over the last half or something yeah and and even two years ago he was unbelievable when it came to the second half sucked the first half but uh the second half he was very good he's going at rb22 in best ball that's about where he belonged i was gonna ask you all right um we have a bunch of new players on new teams Mediocre signing of the week. Odell Beckham Jr. to the Dolphins. DJ Chark to the Chargers. By the way, DJ Chark put up better numbers than all of those Quentin Johnston season-long numbers. So that one is something you could pay attention to because he's probably better than Quentin Johnston. Yeah. Chase Claypool to the Bills. Boston Scott to the Rams. And this morning, Rashad Penny to the Panthers. And you said, whoa. Uh, maybe Miles Sanders is not long for that roster. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they've got some dead cap to deal with if they were to get rid of Miles Sanders, but the fact that they drafted Jonathan Brooks, they weren't part of bringing Miles Sanders in. Miles Sanders still has a big name. They're grabbing Rashad Penny. They've already got Chuba there. It's like, I uh, feel like, you know, maybe maybe a team is knocking on Miles Sanders' door saying, you come on down. either deal with dead cap or a dead running back because he is he's dead done. Dead cap or dead back? I, I don't. Just remember this time last offseason. Frank Wright was a head coach yeah. of the Carolina Panthers, and Miles Sanders was supposed to get over 4,000 targets. So I want to I, I wanted to bring this up, in uh, not here, but I will, um, uh, specific to the Frank Reich. When I was doing the statting and, uh, you know, and all of this, I was looking at the Panthers situation, and I, I like Dave Canales. I like what he did for Gino, for Baker, for uh, the, this last year for um, Rashad White. Yep. But last year at this time, I did like Frank Reich. Like, I, I, I thought Frank Reich was a good hire, was good for the offense, is good offensive mind. He has had success in the past. thought the Colts did him dirty. Now, it was bad. It was very, very bad. But I don't think that he had the weapons. It's not like the Panthers got good when Reich was gone. From the top down, when organizations are run poorly, whoever the coach is, is set up for a harder time at succeeding. This is, so a, I'm a, this is a David Tepper? This is a David Tepper comment. This is David Tepper at the top. I know he came in and when he bought the franchise, it was like all exciting because he's got plenty of money. He's going to go hard. He's going to be aggressive. That's exciting. Look, we're Suns fans. The Matt Ishbia. We, we, yeah. we, we get this. We're excited. Matt Ishbia comes in and buys a team and wants to throw money around and make big trades and it doesn't always work out. Sometimes you got to get out of the way. David Tepper seems very much in the way. Ve so, like, I like Dave Canales. I like some of the moves they've made. But if I have to bet on whether a franchise succeeds or loses, a lot of times I take that bet at the top. I've done that for years and years and years and years with the Browns, and most of the time it's worked out. Uh, with the yeah. Tepper, like, you know, so. So I teppering your expectations? Oh, oh baby! Ten out of ten swish! Break my expectations. Well done, Andrew. It's tough when you have a coach that you have a lot of confidence in. Yeah, I mean, this is a good point. Frank Reich, you liked him. Yeah, I mean, maybe that was the foolish part, and he's just, uh, you know, not good, but um, he didn't get the chance to show it with Tepper stepping in. All right, we have some mailbag questions to get through, which will be fun because we just did our rankings, so we'll be able to talk about it with um, kind of a deeper look on each of these players. Now, uh, Who's doing the mailbag drop? Because oh. there ain't no mic. Oh, I believe uh, yeah, Josh put his hand up first. So, jo uh, Papa Josh, it looks like it's on you, baby. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> Not bad. That and was, for the record. That was pretty good. Since you're on camera right now, show the people how you put your hand up first. Yeah, you touched your nose. You're like, <laughs> nose goes. And you. I don't play by that rule you when the camera's broke on. the code, man. Uh, when the camera's on. I just like to roll the bus right over Josh. You go seniority over nose. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. You, you did well. That you was great. Well. On time. And it wasn't Brooks's. So yeah, yeah. pretty good. Uh, all right. Let's jump in. We got voicemail questions. We've got questions from IG, from Twitter. Uh, if you have one for the show, you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. There's a lot going on over there. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline. We got voicemail questions today. 302-464-TFFB. See, I got Brooks already weighing in, and he, he said Josh is not allowed to do that again because he wasn't bad enough, mm. which, yeah. Well, I mean, you might earn another shot to be bad. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. We do have a voicemail question. We'll kick it off with Luke from Maryland. Hey, ballers. It's Luke from Maryland, and I had a question about redraft. Full PPR. Who do you guys have having a better season, Christian Watson or Marquise Brown? Thanks. It's a good question. Uh, Hollywood Brown, if you don't know, now a Kansas City Chief. And with the rookie, Xavier Worthy coming in, mm -hmm. and then Rushy Rice having some time away from the team, there will be an opportunity for impact for Hollywood Brown. However, I have Christian Watson ahead of him. Really? Because I know, uh, I know you're a Jaden Reed guy, and so yeah, 
I thought you would not have Christian Watson ahead of Brown simply because I thought you'd have Christian Watson um, behind in the in the Packers pecking order. Does that mean Christian Watson is, for fantasy purposes, at the end of the year, your number one Packer? Uh, Christian Watson and Jaden Reed are both very close. I have Reed higher. Uh, he had a nose for the end zone last year. Obviously, Christian Watson missed a significant amount of time. Have been very, very close. Now, when did he miss a significant amount of time? Was it every year he ever played? Correct. Okay. Got so it. I, I just no, I have them similar. I, I, You know, Hollywood Brown, we watched him out here in Arizona for the last couple of years. And it's just hard for me to imagine him coming into Kansas City on a one-year deal with a bunch of other established dink and dunk players with Kelsey and Rice and, you know, soon to be, you know, Tony will be back and Watson will be getting targets and Noah Gray and, you know, Xavier Worthy getting worked into the lineup. Like, it's just hard for me to look at that and say Hollywood's going to be a monster. I have him with about 100 targets. The problem is his catch rate last year was 50%. He was obviously bad last year. Like, you watch him on the field, and he was dealing with a heel problem. And so whatever excuses you want to say, but he was a bad wide receiver. Straight up, was unhelpful. And there wasn't demand for him this offseason. No, as no. As well, which he, tells you something. So it's either it was the heel issue and maybe he's healthy because he's been a quality receiver in the past. Uh, he's been a guy that has, you know, had good stretches, you know, great collegiate production, obviously, and now he has the better quarterback. You know, we might be in love with love, but he's no Patrick Mahomes. So if you want to go tiebreaker and take Marquise Brown, I'm fine with that. If you want to go tiebreaker and go, well, here's the ironic part, right? Like, if you're worried about the injury to Hollywood Brown, uh, then you have to be worried about the injury history to Christian Watson. I'm worried about the – I just think the better, younger player is the one I'm going to go with. I mean, Hollywood Brown in five years of playing fantasy football, because that's what he does. Yeah. He plays fantasy football. He's also that's, in Yeah, effect. he's a huge fantasy football player. 46, 34, 23, 46, 51. So I don't care what the reasoning is. At the end of the at the end of the year, he he and he's had over a hundred targets, four of five years. So something just seems to go awry. And his catch percentage is I mean 63, 50. I don't know. Like he's gonna make big plays for them. But is he their new MVS more than he is their new, you know, uh, number one target? I think it's closer on the MVS side. So I have Watson. I mean, neither of these guys I have super high. Yeah, neither of these guys do I have super high either. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go Watson as well. Watson has been extremely explosive in the games he's played. The problem with Watson is he hasn't played a lot of games. You know, he missed uh, pretty much half the season last year. And in that stretch... Soft he, tissue issues. Yeah, he, he still had two top 10 fantasy production games in that, that short time he did play. His rookie year, he missed a bunch of that. But when he got on the field, he was a dominator when he had... What, what do you have, like... He had, like, seven touchdowns in four games or something insane. So fantasy points... In a half point, looking at Green Bay and where you had them on your initial run through, I am curious. Because we had this question about a month ago when we did our early ranking shows and we hadn't statted them all out yet, and it was gut. Where are they stats wise? What is your order? Between the between the wide receiver core for Yeah, Watson, Reed, Dobbs, and Wicks, I would say. So I've got Christian Watson ahead, then Jaden Reed, then Dobbs, then Wicks. Okay, I have Reed significantly ahead, then Watson, really? then Watson, then Wicks, then Dobbs. So, what is your uh, what's what's your target situation there? Just just targets, because obviously um, Watson will be total targets or percentage. Just total targets. I'm I'm just 107 for Jaden Reed. Okay, I've got him at 89, which so feels fewer than last year. A little low. Are you yeah. making a little? No. Yeah. Uh, well, Jaden Reed last year, his his big games were when Christian Watson was gone. So the splits when you when you look at those, it's, it was just different world of utilization for Jaden Reed. Um, not that he was any worse of a player, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and there's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. Yep, I agree. That that one's one where I believe the talent of Reed and Watson will bring them to the top, but it's a it's an interesting offense. It, it might be – like their offense could be better than Kansas City's for sure. Kansas City's got a really good defense. Hmm. I think that the the Green Bay offense could be a better offense. That's weird to say. I know. 
Because when you said it, I wanted to be like, Ew. you're so stupid. Right. But I think it's true. They really could be. Yeah. Instagram question from Brooke Sifu says, thoughts on Jahan Dodson with a new quarterback? Uh, last year, he got his cardio in, 635 routes run. That is the fifth most run routes in the NFL. You that's wouldn't a, have known it. That's not a full-time player. That's a super full-time player. Four touchdowns on the year. Four finishes in the top 40. 49 receptions. So I had a hard time with them because I. Uh, you look at the depth chart at wide receiver and you're like, Dotson has to do something. Like if, if Jaden Daniels is anything, Dotson has to have some production. Curtis Samuel had over 100 targets, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it was, 119 last year. He's gone. Yeah, Luke McCaffrey right. is, a, is a day two pick barely. It was like the supplemental day two. Um, and he looks like the he, he's literally listed on the depth chart as the third wide receiver right now. Yeah, so, uh, so, I, so I, it's I, like, I've how got does him Dotson... stated as the third. So J Jahan Dotson will be very, very involved. He's obviously going to be running routes, and the question is, will he be, will he be targeted? Because he wasn't last year, and he was his rookie season. How many targets did you give him? 90. All right, I got him at 89. So Looky there. And uh, not as many catches as targets, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, in the end, don't hear what I'm not saying. 90 targets is a good amount of targets. I've got him as my yeah. very not-so-nice wide receiver 69. So I, I'm not a huge believer. It's painful what's happened there. Because from a promising perspective as a rookie. Mm -hmm. Came in on fire, double-digit touchdowns. What right? if I, and if you had taken that and you said, you know what, before the season, I'm going to tell you that they're going to throw the ball more than every team in football. I wouldn't have believed you, but okay. I'll say, uh, let me let me go with that mental exercise. They'll throw the ball more than any team in football. He had seven touchdowns in his rookie oh, year. Seven, yeah. In his rookie year, it, only playing 12 games. All right, voicemail question. Hi, this is Victoria from Maryland. I was wondering if you guys thought that Justin Fields would be a full-time starter or Aaron Rodgers will retire. Which one's going to happen first? Thanks so much, guys. Love the show. <laughs> okay, so that question kind of changed on me. <laughs> um, Justin Field which will happen first Justin Fields is a full time starter Aaron jo Rodgers retirement uh, I'm going to go Rodgers retirement I don't think Justin Fields will be a full time starter now what do you mean by that do you that mean like, somebody gets hurt signs, no 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 because okay. full, -time, full time starter isn't for a, a week full time starter is going into the season that is their clear starter. Now, even if he doesn't play the whole season, but that's what it's saying. Yeah, Will like he get Baker a contract? in Carolina started that way. To, and exactly. Then, to, and then Marcus Mariota in Atlanta got that chance. Those are what your dreams are right now? For right the, now, yeah. Um, I think the dream, to, to be honest. And he's he's this is his last year of the deal, right? They didn't pick up the fifth year. They didn't year. pick up the fifth year, so he's going to be a, a unrestricted free agent. No matter how good he plays this year, he's not going to be a franchise type of player. So that means the best case for Fields, is that they split time this year or, or or whether because of play from Russell Wilson or because of injury to Russell Wilson, Fields comes in and is very, very good, wins games with the Steelers, and gets the contract to be the Steelers starter next year. That's the only path. Rogers retirement I is agree. what I'm going with. I agree. Rogers yeah. retirement. Uh, all right, another voicemail. What's up, ballers? This is Isaac. I have a question for you guys. I was wondering what are some of the biggest rules or your favorite rules around keeper leagues? I'm thinking about doing a keeper league with my friends. I've only done Dynasty so far. So I was just wondering what your guys' opinions are on kind of the rules and stuff and how you go about starting a keeper league. Thanks. Everybody I've ever explained our keeper league to really enjoys the format. So do we want to get into that? Yeah, everybody I've ever played with our keeper format loves playing the format. So uh, there's all there's a thousand ways to play keeper leagues. Um, when we first started our league, which is going into year 17, I believe we had, um, you could just take three keepers. You could keep them for a certain amount of years maximum, and they could be at any position and give them back. And that was, that was it. You don't, uh, you don't lose a certain draft pick for the player. You know, it's not based on the round you got them. It's just, who's your three favorite players from your team. You get to keep them, can't keep a player more than three years. But what happened is Ladanian Tomlinson happen and and guys you know just stacking running backs and hoarding they trade would everybody trade keepers and that would reset their keeper mm -hmm. numbers so that they were there permanently and we decided to do something different that I'll explain and it it introduced a new fun day of the year for the league and what we did is we we have one franchise player so you would consider that to be the 
you know, the king of the keepers, so to speak, the number one franchise player, that player is locked on your team. Yeah, if you've got Christian McCaffrey and you want to have him next year, you can franchise him. You just you call him your franchise player, boom, he's on your roster next year. You then select three more players from your end-of-season roster. Mm -hmm. They must not match the position of your franchise player. So if you franchise Christian McCaffrey and you had Brees Hall on your team, he's not he's not available. Correct. And so then those three players go into what's called the keeper lottery for your team. And we have a special day every year that we jump on Zoom or people in person. And literally, your keeper lottery, it's names out of a hat. Two of them go to your team, back to your roster. One goes into the draft. So you could take a risk like mm -hmm. Jason did this year. He wanted to. I put Brees in my lottery. Yeah, because you, you had a couple running backs and you wanted the chance to keep them both of them. Um, and so that day is really fun every year. And it means that some really big talent drops back into the draft. Somebody lost Terry Kill and Jamar Chase this year. So big players go back into the draft. In fact, um, Al Borland, sitting back there in Deucer's Alley, was on a nice five-year run of losing the best <laughs> player. He would take a chance every year, and that player would always go back in the draft. What was it, Mark Andrews, Nick Chubb? Can't remember all of them, but, yeah, those were you've, two of you've them. And then this year you finally lucked out. But that's how we do it in our keeper league. Yeah, we had Justin Jefferson in the lottery this year. We, we got to keep him. Yeah, maybe stop putting such good players in the lottery, bro. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, you, I had to franchise Bijan. Uh, yeah, all right. Your yeah, team's pretty but good. Owl is also a gambler. <laughs> he, he, is. He, he wants the upside. Well, um, we'll take a quick break, come back with some more questions. And uh, I know Kyle's going to put up an article on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, that details our Ballers League of Record settings, which is that three keeper lottery plus the one franchise. Everybody gets three uh, back on their team, but it's fun. It's a, it's a fun way to do it. All right, uh, this question comes from Kingdom33. Who is the number one tight end off the board in 2024 in a standard scoring league? In it's, a standard scoring league? Yeah, it's Kelsey. Yeah, it's Kelsey. Yeah, for sure. You're just looking at – in a standard scoring league, you're really, really touchdown focused. And, yes, Sam Laporta had 10 touchdowns as a rookie. That's great. But his utilization, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll see um, all sorts of reports on – what the expected touchdowns would be for a player based on where they were targeted on the field. And he very much outproduced what his expectation was. You've got Travis Kelsey getting the ball thrown to by Patrick Mahomes, getting little tap passes near the goal line. Like I'd clearly put all my money on him having the most touchdowns this year. All right. I'm really excited about this next question because it, it's going to spawn another discussion. Dylan L writes in, he says, if Kendra Miller was in this year's rookie class, mm, great way to look at it. Where would he fit into the rankings wise compared to the other running backs? So you're talking Benson and Brooks and Corum, Marshawn Lloyd, Jalen Wright. Uh, he's just 21 years old. He missed nine games as a rookie, so he's kind of a rookie again. Kendra and, Miller. And he's he's very, very New talented. Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints behind Alvin Kamara. To me, there's still the round two running backs in Jonathan Brooks, um, and I guess Trey Benson was a third rounder, right? So you've got to talk about, like, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Marshawn Lloyd. These are day two backs who are behind incumbents, and that is what Kendra Miller is. He's a day two back behind Alvin Kamara, so he's in that tier. I, was, I would, I would certainly put him ahead of the Jalen Wrights, Ray Davises, those types. So I, uh, yeah, and Jamal Williams still rumbling around there too. I watched one other player's entirety of their snaps other than Quentin Johnson. It was Kendra Miller. So I watched every play he made for and the Saints all it. of last year. I did like what I yeah, saw. Yeah, because I've seen it, and it's good. Jonathan Brooks I have at 36 right now. Kendra Miller at 41. Benson at 44. Corum at 45. So to put it in, my rankings, Kendra Miller is ahead of Benson and Corum and Lloyd but and Ray Davis. But for dynasty perspective, he's obviously he I might be Kendrick as young Miller, as a rookie, but he's one year less on his contract. Alvin Kamara ran for 3.9 yards a carry last year. Mm -hmm. And and he was – and Alvin Kamara, as a, as a runner on the ground, an inefficient runner on the ground, was so much better than Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is done. Like that, that little fun thing, it's over. Yeah, yeah, he scored like one time. Rashad White averaged 3.6 on the ground last year. So – I'm saying that because Rashad White was the RB7. Kamara was essentially a top five, top six guy. 
when he came back. And points per game, for sure. And so both of those players, they don't have to average high yards per carry to be the workhorse that gets all the passing game work and be great. But I'm telling – like, if, if Alvin Kamara went down, like, Kendry Miller can catch the football. Mm -hmm. Kendry Miller is – I rarely saw him go backwards. Uh, he had explosive plays in the passing game. He's a very good player. He was disrupted by injury. I love him. And I just don't – I think uh, from a sleeper, like, you, we can talk about it right now. Mike's not here. Like, Kendry Miller and the sleeper list on the UDK. For sure. For sure he should be there. Now, so the, the question here is, like, if he was in this year's rookie draft, I, I know for sure he's behind Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, and me. Those two guys, to me, are gotcha. ahead of Yeah, him. to get back on the question. Yeah, yeah I would um, – Would you – I know Jonathan Brooks would be ahead of him for you. I don't think I'd put – I think I'd put Marshawn Lloyd ahead of him. Okay, Marshawn Lloyd. And I think is I'd, Trey I'd Benson put Benson ahead of him, ahead of him Okay, too. me too. Yeah. So then it's Blake Corum, Marshawn Lloyd, and Kendra Miller. Yeah, and then I think Corum and Wright and Davis and them are behind him. I liked Kendra Miller's – film more than either Corum or Lloyd. So I, I, I would go Kendra Miller behind Benson. Okay. There you go. So either three or four. Yeah. To answer the question. Um all right. Another he's, he's a great dynasty target too. Yeah. Right now like a trade for target. Yeah. Had a had a lousy rookie season. No one's like, oh my gosh, so excited for him right now. All right. Uh this question from Jason on X says when should you do your rookie draft in Dynasty? So, you obviously wait until after the NFL draft. Some people don't, but that's so insane. I mean, you get guys like Troy Franklin going in the first round where, you know, once they fall in the draft, there's no reason to make a, a, a team play that way. So, do it after the NFL draft. Now, most of the leagues that I'm in, our rookie drafts are over. They are after the NFL draft and immediately after the NFL draft. It's like, that thing is over. We give you, like, a, a chance to go to sleep take a big <laughs> breath, wake up and go. You should breathe during your sleep though. I as don't, well. <laughs> yeah, I I I've got a machine that does yeah, that I was for me. Say, you, so, um he get, but to be clear, that's not a um CPAP. You get intubated every night. That's right. That's yeah. right. Full intubation. Um I just I Prefer, just enjoy the feeling. Don't do the work. Pure oxygen. <laughs> um yeah, so uh, you know, I think you can la wait as long as you want. You can go all the way up until it's draft season for else you know, for, for redraft leagues, but the point of a dynasty league is to have fun in the off season. So for me, I'm doing it right after the NFL draft. All right, Tyson in Florida, dear goodness, help me find the chargers RB one amongst Gus and Dobbins and, uh, v <laughs> Vidal Sassoon. Yes. Yes. Vidal and Sassoon. Isaiah Spiller still there and Jared yeah. Patterson and Elijah Dotson this is really, really, really easy. I mean, it's it's the Gus bus. It's uh, it's absolutely the Gus bus. Vidal Sassoon. Oh, Vidal Sassoon is a is an exciting rookie prospect simply because of his name, because of his name and his landing spot. He's a six round, but pick, he's a though. sixth yeah. rounder. Like the people get every year, most of these six round picks that go to a good spot. You're so excited for, and they don't do jack squat. And Vidal Sassoon's not doing jack squat more than likely. Uh. Kimani Vidal is his name, uh, but we call him Vidal. Vidal Sassoon. Sassoon passed away at the age of 84 in 2012. Okay, the so real the, Vidal Sassoon. This is an so honorary. You can, you can take the name. Yeah, you, it's, yes, up for it's up for grabs. So we honor you, Vidal Sassoon. Um, <laughs> so the, the, is that a top 10 name of all time? Um, I'm loving it so far. I mean, just so like far. human name. Oh, just like nickname. nickname. No, I just mean the name Vidal, Vidal Sassoon. Sassoon. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, Especially for someone that was like a salon guy like he did like shampoo yeah. like Vidal Sassoon yeah that can't be of his real name <laughs> I can't say the name and not laugh it's spectacular um the real question about this backfield is J.K. Dobbins because J.K. Dobbins is either healthy or he isn't that, that that's it he if he's yeah, how healthy, much is he lying a little or a lot they paid him nothing he has fifty thousand dollars in guaranteed what? money <laughs> what his guaranteed money was reported as fifty thousand dollars fifty thousand yeah not five hundred thousand, like the fifty k. Yeah, two, two, one zero, and then a so comma. Th that's the kind of cut that you cut him. You don't even know exactly. You don't notice it on the budget sheet. But it also it works in both directions, right? It says that this is not an investment they're making in him to be something special, but it also costs them absolutely nothing to move on. So if he doesn't have it, I expect him to be cut. Which means if he makes the roster. He might be okay, and if both of these guys are healthy, if J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are 
just they're ready to go, they're who they are um, at full strength, then then there is an argument that J.K. Dobbins is ahead of them. J.K. Dobbins was ahead of them when they were both healthy on the same but roster could, with, you know, with yeah. Greg Roman. But the question is, how could he be healthy after an Achilles injury? Isaiah Spiller is um, going into year three. He's averaged 2.3 and 2.6 yards of carry in his opportunities. He That's is, impressive. He is toast. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is another one of those, you know, highly touted running backs who fell in the draft. And most of the time, highly touted running backs to fall in the draft do not work out. Braylon, Edward, or Braylon Allen. Um, obviously, yeah, no, Braylon Allen's got trouble. Yeah, it's well, and plus he's behind Brees. So you, you sometimes you just got to let these guys go. And there are hits sometimes for sure. Uh, the, you know, they're, but they are the outliers and they are the 10% is so if you're making the bet, you want to be on the 90% side. Now, every now and then you're going to get Kyron Williams, but Kyron Williams was someone we love. Or I mean, Kareem all, Hunt or, you know, yeah, which I, mean, I know he wasn't as far, but third or fourth round. Yeah. But like, you know, Kyron fell late in the draft where you just, you know, he was dead to us, but the people that have Kyron on their teams now, they're not even the people that drafted him in the rookie drafts. He hit waivers. Yeah. And then you picked them yep. up. All right, uh, we'll close it out here. Jeff wants to know two questions. Why is Andy rarely on the Dynasty show? And when doing rookie drafts, do you do NFL draft or snake draft style? Rookie drafts are all NFL draft style um, because it's a Dynasty and you've got like the entire roster together. When you're doing a redraft, like a startup, if, if you're doing a Dynasty startup, then it's snake um, to make it even. But once these rosters are established – and the, you know you've got to build it year after year after year. The worst team gets the best pick in each round, uh, you know, in in, in reverse order, the, all the way through the twelfth pick. Um, why aren't you on the well? I, that's show? the reason I don't like NFL draft style rookie. <laughs> I, I'm a snake only man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, ride the snake, big snake guy. Um, no, I mean the, look, we've got two excellent dynasty. Uh, gentlemen and Kyle Borgannoni, Matthew Betts, mm -hmm. and we wanted to have a baller on there, and so Jason and Mike have taken the mantle most often. I have had occasional appearances, and I'm happy to continue to do so. Yeah, you're the... But too many cooks in one kitchen, man. Yeah, you're just the, like, break glass in case of emergency type of guy. Yeah, I'm here when, you know, Jason's tummy hurts, and he's got to go home. My tummy's hurting. Oh, great. Yeah. I shouldn't have I gotta, said that. I got to go home, wrap it up. Um, okay. I sit on the toilet. All right, that is it. We really need to shut this down. UltimateDraftKid.com, a reminder, the, the best ball rankings available right now. So if you go pick up the UDK+, Plus, you can go browse them on the app, on the web, uh, wherever you're at. We'll be back on Thursday. We'll have an overreaction episode, and we'll find out if Jay Grizz moves out of here. We get Mike back. We'll see. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.